Hmm? Uh, waiting on the name. On lecture. So, say you know. Biryani ni nanti kita juga.
Watu wa Chelsea ndio sisi hapa. Ndio sisi watu wa Chelsea. Atafadhali mimbati ile siku hapo. Wallahi, naenda kujina vyetu. Kwani? Ah, mimi nitaenda bila vyetu. Vyetu nzako. Sasa ni kuinua hivi na nyinyi ndefu. Kwani unataka kuisimamisha tu? Si mimi nana vyetu. Ah, sisi fungue. So guys, salamu alaikum. As a, remember that uh, today is uh, the third day. Yeah. So, what do we do? So, please remember that uh, today is the third day. Uh, uh, visit of the Mufti Mink. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because uh, we have uh, been fine, we have been recording for you guys, and I uh, thank you really, really amazing. Thank you very, very, very much, or thank you very important for your support because you have been supporting us, guys. We love you so much, and uh, because of you, we have uh, the energy, the morale to do all these things. So remember that we are doing all these things for you. So as we wait, remember we have at least some 10 minutes to wait for him. Eh? So as we wait for him, we will have uh, some uh, two, three interviews. Then inshallah everything will be all right. So let's get to the interviews and see what we will have to get today, inshallah. I think and I hope that uh, you enjoyed yesterday's uh, yesterday's interview. So let me first uh, do my thing here. Yeah. Because, Alhamdulillah, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, let's get to watch. Remember that this is your TV, Hamu TV 254. And inshallah, let me just show you the overview of the mosque at first. Then we will go on and see the other overviews inshallah as we go forward. So let's get to see this one here. I need this one now, good. So you are viewing and you are seeing the view of the mosque. The people are almost full, alhamdulillah. The mosque management is uh, well arranged. People have arranged themselves. And uh, we have uh, these uh, books here. We have these books here. They are being sold. Eh? So if you really want uh, to, to read about the motivational moments, part two by Mufti Menk, inshallah, you have all the time to buy and uh, listen to the views, to the motivational and uh, maybe you can read indeed uh, what the prophet said, uh, one of the Sahabas, uh, they say that uh, one of the Sahabas uh, Yes. Yeah. Oh, young Muslim organization. Yeah. 
contact the young Muslim Association. So you just contact the young Muslim Association. You can contact them and you can get the books. And you can get the books. Yeah, yeah. So can you please give us maybe the number to the YMA? Remember that the YMA is an, an Islamic organization eh, that was founded mostly to uh, like uh, to motivate and like help the youngsters of the Muslim in this 21st century. We have to motivate and help eh, these uh, youngsters. So the, as you have heard, the name is the Young Muslims Association. If you get to the Google and the Google the the Young Muslims Association, you will find it and uh, also. You can have uh, their contact. Maybe you can have their contact, bro. Yeah. Why are The social media pages. Social media pages. All of them. Instagram. Instagram. TikTok, maybe. Or Instagram. Facebook. Facebook. Instagram. Facebook. Instagram. At YMA or Young Muslim Association. Okay. You can get the contact. Young Muslim Association. So guys, we have found that uh, you can buy these books. Eh? The motivational parts, moments, part one and part two, right? We have part one and part two as a young Muslim association. So make sure you get to the make sure you get to the to the to the to the website or to the YouTube to the Instagram and Facebook and inshallah you will be happy. So these are the pay bills inshallah. So please purchase the books and then later on we want to just get outside a bit and see the view. How is the, the view outside? Have some two three questions about the music. You want to be interviewed a bit? Yes, he does. He does for sure. Please come. Please come. Please come. Let me give out this. Joe Saidi. Joe Saidi. We stand the same. Yeah, yeah, we stand the same. What's your name, please? My name is Abdul Wahab. Abdul Wahab. Abdul Wahab, man. Abdul Wahab, Abdul Wahab, Bilo. Oh, mashallah. That's good. So today is a big day. First, where are we? Who can walk? Adams. Adams. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Come on, Adams. Masjid. And as you can see, and as you can see it, just opposite the Applewood Adams. And today we are going live at the YouTube of World Saint Two Five Four. What do you think about this visit uh, that Mufti uh, Mek made? And uh, what's your view about it? What's your opinion about it? And the uh, impact of the First of all, the impact of the he has brought together. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, mashallah. That's good. That's yeah. good. Secondly, Mufti Mek is a little bit of a question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mashallah, that's good. You are a good model. Where did you know the main YouTube. YouTube. So, at least yesterday I got 99% of the people I interviewed yesterday, they knew him from YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Here, the first person you are interviewing, he is telling us that he knew him from, he knew him from, what is the video guy? He knew him from uh, YouTube. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. So, Mufti Menk, I think uh, what maybe can you tell other people maybe who don't know him or maybe someone is uh, listening uh, to him for the first uh, time? What motivates you to listen to his lectures and all that stuff? Uh, maybe, like, uh, maybe, maybe, okay, like, let me put the question in this way. Like, we were born on Amskiza Mufti Meng. Okay, I usually don't listen to him. I listen to him once. So I came to see him personally. So that I have a clear experience. Yeah, yeah. I'm here with a clear mind so that you know I don't judge him from the only video I watch about him. Yeah, true, true. That's yeah. good. Yesterday, he said, is it yesterday or? I don't remember. If it's not yesterday, it's a uh, backlog most. He said, eh, don't judge anyone with the. One, the small video that you see uh, yeah, in yeah. you maybe YouTube, yeah. that you see in maybe TikTok, make sure you know them or you dig deeper. So, you can dig deeper. That's really great. Yeah, that's, really great. Yeah. that's an amazing thing. And yeah. uh, inshallah, we will get to know him uh, much better. And uh, it will be indeed in Kenya, he has uh, brought many Muslims together. As you can see right now, it's almost 12. The speech is starting at 12. And the people are together. Many of them, they have come together. 
also make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel yeah, and uh, make sure inshallah also you follow Abdul Wahab where TikTok uh, and my Instagram and what you're private yeah but yeah. inshallah <laughs> thank you thank you so guys as you can see now the entrance is that they are getting full of people the cars the vehicles and everything yeah? and uh, remember this is all because of that Everyone now is uh, and it will be really an amazing journey by the way that we get. So let's wait and see about uh, this great person, this great mind that we have today because it's really amazing and indeed you love it. So, Some people who are maybe struggling with their deal, they get motivation to boost themselves in it. You know? yeah. So like the youth, especially the youth, it touches the youth a lot. You can see majority of the people who are entering are from the youth. True, true. By the way, so when it almost uh, we can say uh, 80 percent when you're Mapuja, youth, all the most is the Nimezunguka kutoka Jamia most, kukuja na kukuja nini paklat. Kukuja mpaka ukienda na nini ukienda na South B Alapisha na jana halikam na huku pia Kuhoto wenye wanakuja wengi ni yu That's true So we impact you in a very strong way And what do you think eh? Maybe hii kuwa ya kona social media zenya natumia pengine Ndiyo inafanya hiyo impact Yeah of course youth tunaona space ya kila mtu kila mtu kwa simu That's why una school TikTok Instagram upate video yake unajua kwa ni youth muislamu hauko kwa dini at least kuna ile fitna ndani yako unaona eh watch and watch you watch and watch you mtu nimalize video kutoka hapo slowly nikadhaa watu 
true, true, true. true. So pia mashekhe wengine pia wanakuwa in the in the yes. internet yes. world. Yes. So it's a way of spreading now as much as the internet may have things that are wrong you can use it in a positive way inshallah. True true that's what we are being told that in the world you have because at we have this is our generation and we have technology so it's just that we have to use the technology well yeah, yeah. in a better way in so, a better way inshallah inshallah so and uh, make sure guys uh, you can uh, youtube ama uh, tiktok and uh, you find these videos uh, share so that we can uh, spread uh, the world of Islam, inshallah, and we really love you. Thank you so much. Bro. So, I appreciate it. So, so, oh, mashallah. So, we have got the book here. <clears throat> I was showing you the book. This is the book, an amazing book. If you have been hearing from him, you have been watching him, and today you wanted to like uh, you wanted to read what he says. Eh? These are just his words. These are just his words, uh, like, uh, and uh, they have been printed together. They are just uh, you are you are listening to Baba, and uh, you are this one is a Baba verbally like he said verbally what people came down and wrote them. So remember that uh, these books are found. Uh, uh, you can contact the Young Muslims Association, uh, Instagram or Facebook at Young Muslim Association, and you will really find these books. Mufti Meng, motivational speaker most motivational moments part one and part two inshallah and uh, we really are amazing and we love you so much and then we are doing with the youngster muslim associations eh? you have uh, is a muslim in kenya outside of kenya just make sure please you do the right thing the right time the right way the right place we love you it's almost time so let's get to see if we'll see someone else who we can interview maybe from the seniors inshallah and we really are amazing can we interview a bit i'm gonna go for camera Can you please stand this side because of the Will our message go to Mufti first of all? That's my question. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Indeed, this, this playlist eh, uh, is going to him direct via Instagram. Abbas, inshallah. Inshallah. Let's hope. So, Assalamu alaikum. So, Nani, Nani at the hands, I mean, maybe to Salimi, I want to have a no, 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 he is a young star sent person. So maybe what's your view about this? Maybe you introduce yourself and then you tell us like uh, where did you know move to men? And then impact maybe impact Kubwa Yenyamefanya Komaishaya Kama Komaisha Society a youth. Yeah the twenty first century. Nigani. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Mubina Abdul, a resident of Nairobi. I'm here at the Adams Arcade Mosque, all the way from Pangani. Definitely here to see our most, most loved scholar. I don't know if it's right to call yeah. him that, Brother Mufti Meng. Um, obviously, I've known him for a very long time through social media I guess because it's a very platform it's like a very powerful platform what I love about him is like whenever he's speaking or giving a lecture it's always mixed with jokes and reality and inaingia kwa kichwa and the best part is it's not only Muslims who follow him even non-Muslims like he has a huge crowd and we just love him like we really really love him and I'm so excited because I haven't missed even one lecture Oh, and this is my last lecture and I feel so attached to him it feels like I don't even want him to go well, like, um, no one, no the, one wants the like, first we are lecture really... at Jamia 
when I went over there, well, like, you see now the ladies ni yeah, So cool. you could see the crowd down and I'm not gonna lie, it felt like I was in Umrah. Oh, I swear, Allah. that's the feeling I felt. Because I was in Umrah in um, last year, August. Oh, and the crowd that was there in Medina was the same crowd that was there in Jamia. Oh, so I just hope that Mufti keeps on coming every now and then, once a yearly. And I pray the next time I go for Umrah, I also see him there. Amin, Amin. 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 Thank Amin. you. Yes, sir, please. <laughs> okay. Sister Mubina has already... I don't know what that's just she said. So maybe just yeah, great and, people uh, and then... I just want my... I have my sons. Yeah. Here is one of them, my elder one. Yeah, true. Yeah. I would like to, him to follow uh, the steps the of step our of brother. brother. Inshallah. Yeah, Inshallah. Inshallah. I want to see him the way Mufti make this. Yeah, Inshallah. Inshallah one day. That's my dream. Amen. 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 We love you, Mufti Bank. We love you so much. Thank you for visiting Kenya. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Yeah, inshallah. inshallah. This one first you'll find it at the Hamuti floor. Or we'll say it will be to find it. And also the Madden and the floor. Then after that, we will inshallah uh, try our best to make sure that the Mufti Bank gets the message from Kenya. Yeah. Because we really are also like, it's our pleasure. Indeed, maybe and if I was to be asked, I would have said, yeah, let him buy a car yearly, yearly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And I wish, I wish Kenya yes. would also yes. invite yes. the other scholars like Omar Shleiman, Aki Aiman. It would be such a pleasure. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So to the Muslims, yeah. the, let's say the management or the, 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 the people who have the power to invite other Muslim scholars, eh? Please do that for us because we really will appreciate that and it will be really helpful to us. Not only Mufti Meng, but also others, eh? they will create impact, especially to the young generation. So it's almost like uh, 12 uh, or 5, inshallah, and Mufti Meng is almost starting his speech. So thank you so much and I really appreciate it. I love you, uh, for the sake of Allah. Amen. So guys, now like it's the climax. Remember today is the last day of Muslim here and uh, inshallah, hopefully that everyone will watch this. Everyone will watch this. Please spread, spread it, spread it, spread it. Hamu TV to five four, Walsen TV to five four. Just spread it everywhere. Let every everyone get the message because it will really help them. We love you so much, guys. And let's get to the watching, inshallah. Let's get to the watching and make sure, like, yeah, yeah inshallah, you watch. Eh? We will be live. Eh? We will be live, inshallah. You can watch from there, maybe downstairs, upstairs, inshallah. We will be live, inshallah. Let's get to the Hussein. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So guys, I love you so much and uh, let's get to do this. Let's get to do this, inshallah. As you can see now, the mosque is already full, inshallah, and uh, we are already waiting for him. We are already waiting. Remember, this is uh, Adam Sakit. Where is Adam Sakit Mosque? Adam Sakit Mosque is uh, like, uh, when you are just like uh, Gong Road, eh? as you are going to Karen, as you are going to Karen, you pass by Gong Road, or don't use the Langata Road, eh? use the Gong Road. Gong Road, when you just get to Applewood Adams, all Prestige, just near Prestige, eh? that's where Adams Arcade is. So if you are near, maybe you can take your bolt, order your bolt, and run, 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 keep it up, keep it up. You'll get, you'll get here in time, and inshallah, everything will be all fine. We love you so much, my guys. Which be just be asking. I'm a single tomorrow. Yamala Koyule. I'm going to go to the camera. I'm going to go to the camera. I'm Then <laughs> Okay, all is well. Yes. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because of this, so that it's not like that. Yeah, inshallah. So we are doing a small interview. I am Hussein Al-Masharia Umrah. I have been recording all from a, from a backlight mosque. I didn't go to Jamia Mosque because it was really clouded. So I said, get that late and I'm really sorry to my viewers. And then uh, to the Ummah. And then I go to backlight mosque, I go to Abuda mosque, I go to Masjid Rahma Halima. And here we are the last day. So you are all going to Canada and you want to interview you. Yes. Inshallah, may Allah grant you the access there. And then maybe you want to tell us about him. Most of you just a bit, maybe you know him. Where did you know him from? And the impact of the society, Inshallah. Yeah. Very well known, I think, around the world. Yeah. And uh, I don't have uh, personal uh, meeting with him. Yeah. I think that it was. But alhamdulillah, since I came over here on uh, Friday, I was in the Ghana Masjid. Uh, and we had a good opportunity to hear this khutbah. It was good, alhamdulillah. And uh, I would like to meet him today. We might, inshallah, perspective of my invite him to, to Canada. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. So, yeah, inshallah. So, we really appreciate it. And may Allah grant you the view of him and the interview, inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. What are you going to do? Please keep your shoe bags with you. Do not park them on the side of the Masjid of Bible Pillars. Please keep your shoe bags with you. Thank you. I'll give you a moment to do it. 
السلام عليكم دكتور So what's your name? My name is Ahmed Sami. Ahmed Sami. Yeah. Oh, mashallah, from Turkey. From Turkey. So uh, this, this is Ahmed Sami from Turkey. So why did you visit the mosque today, bro? To see Muftimen. To see Muftimen. Have you ever maybe seen him again physically? No, no, no. No, no. So this is uh, your first time. Yeah. Oh, mashallah, that's good. And uh, maybe how did you know Muftimen? Uh, I saw his videos on YouTube. I to that. Oh, mashallah, that's good. Maybe he has a, a very big uh, impact in your life. Uh, yeah, like I, I sometimes when I have some questions about Islamic topics, I go to his speeches. Oh, mashallah, that's good. So, and uh, maybe all the some other scholars should even follow his ways with the opening maybe the YouTube accounts, the TikTok accounts, so that they can reach the world, right? So, inshallah, bro, thank you so much and uh, welcome at the uh, Adam Sakit Mosque, inshallah, and uh, may the lecture be uh, of uh, like uh, benefit to you, inshallah. Shukran, bro. Thank you. So guys, I'm Assalamu alaikum. How are you? What's your name, please? Felix. Felix. Oh, Felix. Oh, mashallah. So, where are you from? I'm from Turkey. You are from Turkey? And uh, why? Maybe, where did you visit the most? I want to see You want to see Mufti Men? Yes, I want to see Have you ever seen him maybe again physically? No, it's my birthday. It's your first time? Yes. Oh, mashallah. That's good. So, like, uh, and uh, where did you know him from? From the, like, Instagram. Instagram and uh, so, so, social, social media. media. Oh, mashallah, that's good. So, Mufti Meng, indeed, many people here knew you, many youth star knew you from the social media. And please, make sure that also other scholars eh, come to Kenya, please. We will really appreciate that. So, what can you tell the youth about Mufti Meng and uh, maybe if, like, uh, what's impact to the 21st generation? Like, I think he's, like, lessons are really useful. Yeah. He's showing us the right ideas. Yeah. Right ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. So, Alhamdulillah, we are close now to you about Mufti And indeed, it's his time now. He is almost entering the most. He is entering the most place now. So, inshallah, let's get to do this. For also named as the gentleman, brothers have been made on the third floor with the LED screens showing to you what's going on here. It's a gay live stream, inshallah. And uh, so we request to be fast enough to get between us so that other brothers can also get to the next So as you can see now, the mosque uh, entrances have already been uh, closed, hence the mosque now is full. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the mosque is full, alhamdulillah, and we really appreciate this because this is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone who has come here, they have come to listen to the Sheikh Muft Ismail Menk, inshallah, and uh, hopefully it will be of help to the youth. As you can see, 
many of the, these uh, people here are the youngsters eh? so inshallah let's get to see him and let's wait and see what will be the next thing Assalamu alaikum, come, 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 I ask you a question. How are you? You're fine? I want you to be seen on camera today. You want that too? Okay, let's, let's focus this one here. So let's try this one. So, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Assalamu alaikum. How are you? You what's your name please? Yes? Munir. Munir. So Munir, what's the Munir, what's uh, what's the name say eh, of uh, Mufti Menk? What the what the real names of Mufti Menk? You know Mufti Menk is real names? Yes, so you just know Menk. So so he is called uh, Mufti Ismail Meng, okay? That's his name. Most Ismail Meng, not Meng on the okay? Inshallah, thank you very much.
Imran, you are Imran, and you knew him through YouTube. What is his real name? You know them? Another name except Menk that you know? Mufti. A Mufti is my Menk, inshallah. Okay? Now let's stop fearing the camera. Now let's. What's your name? Zakaria. Zakaria, who was Zakaria in, uh, from the creation? Who was the Zakari? The Prophet. Oh, mashallah. The father to who? Yahya alayhi salam. Okay? So, you are the father to Yahya. Okay? So, 
when uh, you grow up call your child Yahya okay insyaallah insyaallah so how did you know Mufti Mek? through youtube oh mashallah that's good that's good that's good that's good that's good assalamu alaikum you good you're good what's your name yes said said from you are from here adams or kibera Oh, you are from Kenya. What does it How did you know Mufti Mek? You too. Oh, mashallah. What are his real names? Ismail. Ismail name. Oh, mashallah. That's good. That's good. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Nice meeting you, brother. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Don't fear the camera, bro. So, how did you watch it? Ibrahim. Who was uh, Ibrahim uh, in the history of Islam? He was a prophet. The father to who? He was a prophet and then his son was a prophet. So, what the name of the son? Okay, okay, what the... He, the son is called Ibrahim alayhi salam. So just imagine accepting Islam is uh, that easy. Just imagine how accepting Islam is very easy. Maybe you have that mindset of like, uh, if you are going to accept Islam, many things are going to happen. But you just saw it right now. Accepting Islam is that you bear witness that there is no any God rather than Allah, the creator of the earth and the moon, the, the, the skies, the creator of the moon and the sun and the stars, and the creator of everything. The space the and also, brothers. you bear witness okay. that eh? Muhammad is taken for ladies with young Muhammad children below five years, they can use the Haraka Muhammad as a name for his prophet. And then after that, you bear witness that Jesus is not the son of God, but a prophet of God. That is how easy it is to accept the Muslim and the Muslim of Rabbi. So the ladies with the young children can go into the Haraka room, which is on Nazarene floor. There is a screen there and a speaker there. The proceedings of the uh, event today, inshallah. We also advise you that a uh, uh, space for uh, ladies has been organized on the first floor, also known as the multi purpose hall. There are screens and speakers there, so they will also be able to follow the entire proceedings, inshallah. Third floor has also been reserved for brothers. For the lower floor, those who come late, they can proceed straight to the third floor. Also screens and mic and speakers have been arranged there for them to be able to see and follow the proceedings, inshallah. We request you once again, brothers, let's show respect to our guests, let's show respect to the masjid, 
let's show respect to each other. Let's conduct ourselves in as early, early manner as possible, rather than pushing by the time of exit or trying to rush towards the exit gate. We request you, let's do it in an orderly manner, and inshallah everything will be smooth and well organized. We are trying our best, but we need your cooperation to be able to conduct ourselves properly. Also, please make sure we do not leave an empty bottles in the masjid. Do not litter the masjid. Let's keep the etiquette of the masjid in its place. So my guys, as I was explaining to you that uh, converting to Islam is really easy. You just say some words and those words you say, they are Ashhadu, that is, I bear witness, Allah, that there is no ilaha, God, illa, except Allah, except the one God that you know, the creator of the, the skies and earth. Then you bear witness that, wa Ashhadu, and I bear witness, Anna that or indeed Muhammad Muhammad Rasulullah is the is the, the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet is the messenger yeah right the messenger he delivered the messenger of Allah and then wa anna Isa and that Jesus Rasulullah is a prophet of God, is a messenger from God subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is not the son of God. When you say those words, imagine you have converted to the Islamic religion. You are in the Islam religion now when you say that. And remember that we have names, for example, our young man here, the one who just converted, he said that he chose the name Ryan. Ryan is one of the doors of paradise. Rayan is the one of the doors of paradise. Remember that in Islam we do believe that paradise has, has a doors to the gardens. And hell has, a, has holes. So if you do bad deeds, indeed you will go to hell and it has holes. Holes, that means like in a hole, when you are in a pit, for example, it's really disturbing. But you are in the garden, the winds, the tem the the environment there the just like the calmness everything is just amazing so that is all about islam guys and let's wait for the mufti mink inshallah we listen from him we hear the speech and then after that all will be well and we will really be having a good and a great time with him together inshallah let's wait and see as we wait i will go on doing some people here the interview inshallah slowly i'll be asking some children some questions just small small questions inshallah and then we will see after that what will be the next thing if they know the answers and i am sorry my, my viewers my i'm sorry i didn't remember to carry with me some sweets maybe to give them as gifts but i'm really sorry but let's go let's see i want to see like uh, how these kids intelligent how they are inshallah so let's go and see By the way, never drink water standing. It's not good for your health. Don't drink water standing. It's not good for your health. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, never drink water standing. So never try. I love you, my guys.
always get to ask something. I am trying to look where there is a space eh, so that eh, we can take the, the questions easily, inshallah. So let me try and look. Let's go ask some kids questions. Hassan, uh, who was Hassan in Islam? He was a man the two black sons of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? He was a man the two black sons. You know what's a great son? What is a great son? You have a grandfather. What's your name of the grandfather? So you are his grandson, okay? So Hassan was the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you know Mufti Menk? Have you ever seen him again? No? You have never seen him? So today you will see him live. What are his real names? Anaitonanye Majinayake? Mufti Menk, Jinayjina? Awji Jinayjina? Ismail, okay? Maybe Ismail. Inshallah. Social media is too. Mashallah, I don't want to lie. Okay? Mashallah. Thank you. Coming to you. Let's reduce the light here. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name? Khalid. Who is Khalid in this time? He was a. Uh, ah? So he was a fighter in Islam. Khalid bin Awalid. He was named the sword of Allah. <coughs> yeah, and he was the companion of uh, the prophets. Yeah, right? So how do you know Mufti Menk? You have watched a lot of his videos, a lot of them. Oh, mashallah, where TikTok or YouTube? YouTube, oh, mashallah, that's good. Today, you are not going to watch the videos again, you are going to see him give the lectures face to face, physically. Okay, inshallah, shukran. So, let's get the test going. Once again, we're reminding brothers and sisters that arrangements for ladies have been made on the first floor, party of the song. Brothers can bring the resident floor and the third floor. Third floor, there is space available. There is food facilities available on the third floor. We are going to go to India, we are going to go to India, we are going to go to India. Now, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm 
ni kurufa ya kwanza Mpangu ya badana kusua ni kurufa ya kwanza Badana wanakua na watoto wa ndogo Na za kuja kwa hala karumu katika mezi ni mtu wa nisha Asha maliza I think eh So Nimegombia Omar al-Faruk Omar al-Faruk Wajua Omar al-Faruk Mnani katika Islam Sayyidina Omar Radiyallahu anhu Ni katika wale mashuja Ambao kwamba wali inge katika Islam Na likuwa miongoni mama sahaba Ambao kwamba Walikuwa khalifa wapili Khalifa ni mtu ambao kwamba Ana mfano saisi Tuko na president Sasa president Akifanyikiwa na jambo Yule mtu ambao kwamba huwa anasimamia uongozi Anakuwa ye ndiyo kama president Uwe ndiyo khalifa Sawa Yani tunaiza sema ni successor Sawa Successor Yani mtu mwenye ambao kwamba anakurithi kitu kama hiyo Sawa Lakini katika uongozi Uwe ni khalifa Sasa likuwa khalifa wapili katika uislamu Sawa Na ni mtu mkubwa sana Sawa Katika uislamu ni mtu mkubwa sana Mpaka Korani na mtambua So kikisho mechunga hiyo jina Sawa Assalamu alaikum bro Jina nana Farid Farid Masha Allah Farid kutoka wapi Ume toka wapi Hapa kibera Masha Allah So like Mwacha ni kuulize swali ya Majina kamili ya mufti menk ni gani Ni Ismail mufti menk Mufti Ismail menk Right Mufti ni title Mufti Mufti ni kama vile tuseme Professor Mufti ni kwa kusema professor Something like professor you say mufti Someone who has a very high education level Someone who like Tunamutarajia We expect a lot from him With the fatwa Fatwa is something for example If you think of something And then it becomes a problem to the ummah We need fatwa We need something to give us guidance So they sit down and they like come together, sit down and explain it to the woman. So they are called muftis. Yeah. Olimjua di mufti menk. Wapi ulikuwa na skiza wapi? TikTok and YouTube. So you knew him through TikTok and YouTube. Mashallah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's go to our next brother here. Assalamu alaikum bro Assalamu Jina nani? Abdi Nasir Abdi Nasir Abdi Nasir man What? Abdi Nasir nani? Abdi Nasir English No, I'm asking eh Abdi Nasir who? What's What's Oh, Abdi Nasir Muhammad Wakona majina mawili makubwa What? Wakona majina mawili makubwa You have two names eh Oh You have two great names Yeah Okay You have Abdi Nasir What does it mean? The slave of Allah. So Nasir is one of the names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Oh, mashallah, that's good. And what about Muhammad? Muhammad, the messenger. Yeah, is the name of the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So how did you know Mufti Menk? I seen him before. You have seen him before where? In America. In America. Live, eh? And maybe, what can you tell youths who are not listening to him right now? They made, oh, okay, that's good. It teaches you things that you can use in life. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. And uh, maybe, do you follow his uh, social medias? Yes. So you listen to them too? Yeah. Oh, mashallah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, and uh, what else do I want to ask you about? I think that's enough for today, right? Yeah, yeah that's enough for today. Uh, so the youths who are there outside and they are not listening or they didn't get a chance to uh, have uh, this uh, lecture or to listen to this lecture, I promise you are missing out. That's what you have been told by Brother Abdi Nasir. And he has told you that Abdi Nasir means the slave of Allah. So when you hear some, someone called Abdul, 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 Abdul Rashid, Abdullah, Abdul Wahab, Abdul, 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 it means the slave of Allah. There is nothing good than being a slave of Allah. When you be a slave of God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that makes you like, a, you know, like a slave of Allah. It means you do what Allah likes, yeah, and you 
keep yourself from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. So make sure even if you are not called Abdul, be yourself and be your name and make sure that you also to follow the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abstain from what he has told you to abstain. We love you so much guys. Thank you. Hamu TV to Fai Fobro. So what's your name? Nordin. Nordin. Nordin from? From Kibera, mashallah. So how did you know Mufti Meng? Have you ever seen him before? No? How did you know him? From my brother, from your brother? Through, so, through maybe social media, YouTube, YouTube? YouTube? Oh, mashallah, that's good, that's good. And uh, what do you, how do you expect to see him? Like when I expect Leo to monaji, mtumkwa, mtumbigi, eh? And what about his dress code? Do you like it? The new one, aba, he won. Nasa sapiyo, nasa sapiyo, tafti arafat kama ye, and then you'll be wearing that cap. Eh? Then it will be good. How much is it if I fall to Diana Prasad? I'm Khalid. Salaam alaikum bro. What's your name? I'm Khalid. Khalid. From? From Kibera, mashallah. So, this is what you guys are. So, like, uh, I have seen you are reading, uh, is it English Quran? No, it's Sahil Bukhari. Oh, mashallah. Sahil Bukhari. Do you know who is Bukhari? The, the book that you are reading, eh? do you know who is the owner and who is the author? Like, who, who, who said the words that are written there? Do you know him? You don't know him? Mm, Bukhari, first, that's a name, like, for example, I call you according to where you stay okay so in uh, in Arabic we call someone for example I can say I am Hussein okay so I say Hussein Al-Kini I am Hussein the Kenyan okay so his name was not really Bukhari he was from Bukhari that's why he was called Al-Bukhari yani it means he is from Bukhari okay so do you know what your name is in Islam like Khalid Ninani katika Islam there is this person eh? he is really a great person in Islam he was called Khalid bin Walid Khalid bin Walid he is among the companions that Prophet wasalam, himself he told him you will not die in the war so whenever he went to any any like uh, any jihad and before us before he became a muslim aliwa mtu mkubwa sana aliwa ami yake mtume ami ami is the uncle uncle from the side of the father ndio anaitwa ammu kisha hal ukisikia halun katika katika kiarabu una ni anko
please, please utilize these facilities. On the mezzanine floor, there's still room for brothers to be able to uh, take advantage of that. Also, we request you, please keep your shoe bags with you. Please keep your shoe bags with you. When you leave, you leave them with you. And please, any used bottle, water bottles, make sure you don't leave them in the masjid. Please, let's leave the masjid clean as we found you. Also, we request you, please, Bro, let's finish, eh? to ensure that we maintain order and respect for our guests and for each other. He was the we request you, when the time comes to leave, let's leave calmly and orderly. The guests yeah, or the speak up. As soon as he finishes, we we'll request yeah. you to remain seated until he has been Islam. escorted Aliwa, to the waiting room. So, the for brothers and sisters, yeah. please let's not crowd Islam. around our guests, yeah. inshallah. That's all what I want to tell Please look after your personal belongings. The masjid guards or the volunteers or the management is not responsible for any losses. Chairs have been arranged for elderly. Please make sure that only adults and elderly are using the chairs, inshallah. The volunteers are here for your comfort and convenience. Please follow the instructions to ensure that everything runs smoothly, inshallah. In another seven minutes, we will have the salah. Immediately after the salah, we request you please remain seated when we welcome our guest speaker, Islam. So it's almost solar time guys as you can see and that we are waiting for them of the Mengi Inshallah.
So guys, we are waiting for the prayers. I don't want to keep you bored. That's why I want to explain everything that's going on. We are waiting for the prayers, inshallah. As you can see, people are standing, some are praying sooner, and the, the security here is tight. As you can see, everyone in reflectors here, they have uh, like uh, they have kept the security tight, and alhamdulillah, the mosque is uh, indeed well arranged. The discipline is high here. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And everything is okay. So, we are waiting for the solar. And then after solar, inshallah, we will start our speech. So, just go on listening. I have just uh, decided, like, uh, hence, and uh, the space is set. I have decided uh, to come here, sit, look for a place where I will pray, inshallah. Then after that, we will go on, we will complete what we have started, inshallah, because it's really getting to be amazing. Remember, today is the D day. That it means like it is the last day that he is in Kenya. He was in Kenya from Friday. The Friday speech he gave in Masjid Jamia. Then after the Friday, the Friday speech, he gave also like at Maghrib, during Maghrib, he gave the he gave another speech at Parklands Mosque. After that, he gave another speech at Al Huda Mosque. That was yesterday from 12. At Maghrib, he gave another one where at Masjid Rahma Halingam. And here today, we are Mount Adam's uh, Akeda Masjid, inshallah. So after here, I don't know the really the procedure, but uh, according to the timetable we had, this is the last masjid he is attending here in Nairobi. Maybe he will uh, travel or will have another thing that he will uh, be telling us. So, indeed, if anything, or I will have any other opportunity to go with uh, him wherever he goes, then inshallah. In space for you, inshallah.
Mbele lolita. Hapa boss hapa hapa. Acha hapa hapa. Naomba usongee mbele kidogo ili kamera yako tusonge mbele. Sangia watasangia. Sangia watasangia. Kuna
my beloved brothers, my children, all of you who are here, my elders as well, as much as you can, frequent the houses of Allah. Allah, this identity you have is by far very, very important as a Muslim. And for us to be able to come and frequent the houses of Allah, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly says that such a person the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly says that such a person would be granted VIP status on the day of Qiyamah. You know from among the seven who will be shaded, one of them is رَجُلٌ تَلْقُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ A person whose heart is connected to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Echoes of enlightenment. Enlightenment is from Allah. If you want guidance, you have to look at Revelation. You will find that guidance in Revelation. We are here to remind one another about our duty unto Allah, the one who made us. He made us, he's going to take us back. In the process, while we are here, there is a certain mannerism. There is something he wants from us. The only way we would know is for him to tell us. There's no other way. So what did he do? He sent to us messengers to tell us. And all of those messengers lived in their communities and societies. The echoes of the messages that were delivered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these messengers live with us to this day. When I talk about Musa alayhi salam in the English language, Moses may peace be upon him, the Quran which is Revelation from Allah, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in it from among the stories of the prophets the one that is mentioned the most Musa alayhi salam, the prophet Moses may peace be upon him Why did Allah speak about him so much in the Quran? There are many reasons One of the reasons is that Allah Almighty wants us to draw a lesson One of the reasons is that Allah Almighty wants us to understand what happened and how Allah dealt with it. These are part of the gifts of Allah to us. If the ones He chose went through challenges, do you think you and I are not going to go through challenges? We will go through challenges and it might be more difficult for us to navigate through them because we are not prophets of Allah. They went through bigger challenges than ours definitely, but they navigated through them with the direct assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is encouraging us. And this is why when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was going through so much in Mecca and even in Medina, Allah Almighty says, we have sent to you or told you the stories of those before you they have all been through hardship. They have all been through difficulty. They have all navigated through the hardship by our help. All of their people gave them a tough time. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Meaning they were from among them those who supported them fully. But from among them, all of them have been through tough times from their own people. All of them. There is no prophet of Allah who just came in and from day one everyone was okay and everything, everyone listened and they obeyed. No! There were those who listened, those who did not listen. There were those who came in later on and there were those who didn't come at all. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he started off speaking to Quraysh, there were no Muslims from among them. When he brought them to Mount Safa and addressed them, there were no Muslims from amongst them. Besides the closest to him, Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anha, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha, and a few, the smallest circle, the rest of them, they were not even Muslim. Did he give up? No, he didn't. Did he say, these people have threatened me, so I am not going to talk to them anymore? No. The more hardship came from them, he became more serious about getting the message to him, to them. In Ba'if, he said, 
Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la yadamun Oh Allah, guide my people, they don't know They don't realize what exactly they are doing Because he knew he's the Prophet of Allah So oh Allah, guide them, they don't know what they are doing Subhanallah If you go back to Musa alayhi salam There is repetition of his name but every time Allah mentions Musa alayhi salam in the Quran in each place it is in order to highlight a different aspect of his life every time sometimes it's to do with when he was little sometimes it's to do with the condition just prior to when he was born when he was born and sometimes it's to do with Harun sometimes it's to do with when he went out to Medea sometimes it's to do with how the two women who came across in order to in order to get their sheep to quench the thirst of their sheep how he dealt with them all of this there is lesson in it for us so in the last few days during my speeches I have been trying to highlight one from among the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some of the echoes of enlightenment today I have chosen the Prophet Musa alayhi salam Moses may peace be upon him a great man he went through many challenges what was the major focus the major focus was calling people towards Allah but there was one major problem and that was in the form of a person that person's name was the Pharaoh Fir'aun so Allah Almighty says there was a man who used to call himself God he says I am the Lord of the worlds I am God he used to say my people you have to worship me la hawla wa la quwata illa billah yet he used to believe himself if he ate it needed to come out but he used to say worship me he got sick and ill at times he was struggling as well he knew he was a human like everyone else but because he had power authority and wealth he thought he was better than the others they are my slaves they must do what i want
When I was in India one day, I was traveling in Delhi with my wife, and I saw a beautiful, small-looking, nice bag that was like a short version of the big ones that we use. And I just told my wife, this thing looks cute. The guy read it, he said, you know what? This is 400 rupees, you can buy it now. I told him, you know what? Thumbs up. I just wanted to see what he would say. I told him, but there they sent him it at 90. He said, give me 80, it's okay. In one second, you drop from 400 to 80. And I was wondering what it was. I told him, I'm only lying to you, but I just wanted to see that you are also lying to me. You see, you are also lying to me. So, people are insistent. You know what? The guy wants to send you something. He keeps walking with you, and he keeps going, and he keeps insisting that, you know, you have to do this, and you have to do this. So, this fortune teller comes about, and he says, that, you know what, I'm going to tell you your future. He says, I don't want to know. Seventy dollars. He dropped you, okay, sixty-five. But I do not want to know anything from you. Please don't talk. No, fifty dollars. Please, I don't want to know. Okay, make it forty-five dollars. Listen to me. I'm not interested. Anyway, he kept on going. Until he stopped at how much? Five dollars. The brother, good Muslim man, was with his wife. He just sat down somewhere to, you know, uh, to relax a little bit. And this guy comes next to him and says, you know what, you're going to live for 70 years. At 70 you're going to die. And you know what, you're going to be there. And he said a few things. This brother was not interested. So he told him, he said, where's my five dollars? He said, hey, if you did not know that I'm not even going to give you the five, how would you know what's going to happen in 70 years? You understand the point? You don't even know that this five is not coming to you and you claim to know what's coming after 70 years. In seven seconds you don't know. Allahu Akbar. So you see how people play with your faith. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, don't. Shaitan comes in and one truth and twenty lies. Ninety-nine lies, one truth, and so on. Yulquna sam'a wa akhtaruhum kadibun. Allah describes their lies. Allah says, most of them are lies. And most of what we say is a lie. So we don't fall for this. But there was a fortune teller who told the Pharaoh, he told the Pharaoh that there will be a young man who's going to come from the children of Jacob, who is going to take away your throne. Now a man got upset, you know. I'm sitting on the throne here. I'm a big man. And someone, a little baby from among the people of the Banu Israel is going to come and take over my throne. Who is he? He says, no, he will be born in one of the odd years. Rotation. He says, I am so powerful, I will kill all the children who are born in the odd years. All of them. All the males. And he started doing You have been Say that just kill them all because when they 
no longer they're going to trouble us anyway. We heard that statement coming from their political leaders. It's nonsense, it's unacceptable. And the worst of it is there are powerful nations supporting this type of statement and saying that there's nothing wrong. They have a right to defend themselves. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the Pharaoh saying, I'm doing this because I have a right to defend myself. Those little babies. He says, no, I have a right. I heard that one of them perhaps is going to come up and take away my sheep. Where are you? What are you talking about? Who do you think you are? You might think because of the little power you have today on earth, you might get away. It's only for five minutes that you are getting away. After that, I swear by Allah who raised the skies without pillars, you are coming down. You have to. To your knees because what you are doing is exactly what the Pharaoh was doing. And the sad part is you are supposed to be on the other side of the coin. In fact, as people who were persecuted in the not so distant past, you should be very conscious of how you treat others. Unfortunately, people don't learn a lesson. They never learn a lesson. So, what happened? The Pharaoh started killing, and Allah's plan, you can never run away from it. There was a little boy born, Moses, Musa. That's why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Every tyrant has a Moses. There's a Moses. If there's a tyrant in your community, there is a Moses in your community who will stand up to that tyrant. Have you seen them? You might know some, you might not know some. SubhanAllah. You have a Moses for every Pharaoh. For every Pharaoh, there's a Moses. May Allah make us Moses and not Pharaoh. Just say Amin if you know what I say. So my beloved brothers and sisters, in one of the years where he was killing the babies, a baby was born, Allah wanted to save the child in such a way that he would be brought up in the Pharaoh's house, under his nose, with his money, with his facility, with his luxury, with the with upbringing in the home, because Allah didn't bless his wife with children. So the wife always yelled for kids, kids. One day they were walking down the street and the wife saw a little child in a little casket or basket. And the, 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 the wife believed that this was some form of a miracle as a gift because he used to call himself the Lord. She knew, by the way, that he wasn't the Lord. You know, when you're a wife, I don't want to be very low because we are in the house of Allah. But when you're a wife, you see things from your spouse that the world does not see. Right? You see them in a way that's embarrassing sometimes. If they are honorable, you will love everything you know about your man. And if they are a cheat and a hypocrite, you will say to yourself, this guy is a liar. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, khayyukum, khayyukum The best of amongst you are those who are best with their spouses. When your spouse stands up and says, this person is upright, beautiful, amazing, superb, you know it's the truth because they live with you 24-7. They know you better than anyone else. Allah Almighty says that we want to remind you about what was said by the wife of the Pharaoh. What did she say? Allah says, we have given the example of the wife of the Pharaoh when she prayed to us and she said, Oh my Lord, talking to Allah the Maker, the real creator. She says, Oh my Lord, build with you for me a house in paradise and save me from the Pharaoh and his bad deeds. Wow. Imagine your wife asking Allah, oh Allah, save me from my husband and his evil and his bad deeds. La hawla, la quwwata illa billah. May Allah protect us. I hope it doesn't happen in Kenya. They should be saying, oh Allah, bless my spouse, bless my husband, make him even more beautiful in every single way, in his character, in his salah, in everything. MashaAllah. May Allah grant us two homes. Amen. So she made this dua. At that point, 
The Pharaoh wanted to destroy the child because he knew this child there is something suspicious about the child. But because, because he knew that the spouse of his wanted the child so badly, he said, okay. The wife says, we want to look after the child, okay. Allah told the mother of Musa alayhi salam, Allah inspired her to put the baby in a basket in the water, in the river. And Allah says, don't worry. We will definitely bring this child back to you and inshallah make it from the messages. Allah told the mother already, he is coming, he is going to be yours, don't worry. For now, we have a plan. Put him in, do what we say. She knew, she knew, I'll come. Why? If Allah told me to do something, I will do it without thinking. My brothers, my sisters, Allah told you to do Salat al-Fajr. We do it without thinking. We know there's something in it for us. Maybe we won't understand sometimes with the mind not being so mature. But as you grow older, you realize. If Allah says pork is haram, haram. I don't even want to ask why. If Allah says do seven tawaf around the Kaaba, I don't worship the black box, but I'm doing it as an ibadah because Allah instructed me. That's why I'm doing it. If Allah says kiss the black stone, I will kiss it. I don't worship it and I don't believe that it is something I'm worshiping at all. But if I did not get an instruction, I wouldn't do it. I'm only obeying the instruction, so I'm worshiping actually Allah. Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu kissed the hajar when he was around the Kaaba. And he says, Wallahi, I know you are a stone. You do not benefit, you do not harm. Nothing about you. But had I not been, had I not seen the Prophet kiss you, I would never kiss you. Then he kissed it. What does that mean? I don't understand why you told me to do this, but the fact that you said to it, it's done. That's Ibadah. Many of us, we say, no, no, I don't understand why I can't do this and I can't do that. If Allah told you not to do it, let that enlightenment echo in your life and the lives of your children. They were watching. My father used to pray. My father used to read Quran. My mother, she was always dressed in a proper way. We talk. We say things. You are the role models. We need echoes to continue. What is the, what is the idea behind the term echo? It doesn't just last for me. It goes in rings to the next generations. When someone says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You can get the ring. You go to Makkah, you hear it two, three, four times afterwards. Sometimes a few seconds later you hear it come back, right? That's the echo. It needs to go to the next generation and the next and the next and come forward and back and move and come. It's enlightenment is for all. Here is the Pharaoh. Allah had a plan where the Pharaoh didn't even realize, you know what, I am actually going to bring this man up. Can I tell you one of the narrations that's mentioned in al bidal on Nihai? It is said that the Pharaoh wanted to test the child. And so what he did is he put some little toys that are befitting a child on one side and he lit a fire on the other side. And he told his wife, if this child is going to go for the toys, I'm going to execute the child. And if this child is extraordinary and goes for the fire, then I'll leave the child. And the narration states, obviously it's an Israeli riwayah, there is a whole history of what it is, but we mention it just as a point of interest, that's it. It's not a matter of great importance to actually know, but it's interesting. So it is reported he went towards the fire and that's why his tongue was a little bit hurt and when he spoke he had a bit of a stutter and he couldn't speak as clearly as his brother Harun, which is manifested in the Quran later on. So when he went there, the fellow said, okay, now I will leave this child. Because you know what? It's not so normal where normally children would go towards the toy. This child went elsewhere. So he left the child. As the child grew older, he had the best upbringing, such an upbringing that was not going to be given to him by his own mother. And Allah Almighty grant us peace. There is a story about how, and it's mentioned in the Quran, no woman was able to suckle this child. And Allah made sure that a woman who was the mother of the child was the only one whose breast the child took in order to suckle. 
And therefore, Allah says, did we not promise you we're going to bring your child back to you? Allah Akbar, all of us here who are separated from our children because of whatever reason it might be, Allah will return your children to you, don't worry. The same Lord who returned Musa to his mother, may peace be upon them, shall return your children to you. There are people who are suffering, either divorce or something, and then you find one of the two say, look, that child, you're not going to see the child again. Oh, don't worry, they will come. Inna radun ilay. I learned from that verse. Ah, you will be returned to you. Someone took something from you. Relax. Allah will give justice. That is what I learned. So Musa alayhi salam, as he grew older, the Prophet Moses, they became conscious of who we are, who they are, because they were enemies and they were people who were part of the same clan, who were oppressed. The Pharaoh, what was he doing? His people, he made them cronies. And the people from another tribe, who were the children of Jacob, he enslaved them. What is the enlightenment from that? Wallahi, we are not allowed to be racist, tribalist, as Muslims. All of that is jahiliya. If you think because I belong to a certain tribe or a certain race or a certain ethnicity, it makes me superior. Wallahi, there is ignorance in your system that needs eradication. We are equal and we shall remain equal in the eyes of Allah except by taqwa which is only known by Allah and that is piety and God consciousness. That is what it is. So this is Allah's favor. Something I learned is the Pharaoh divided the people. We should not be dividing the people. No matter what your color is and what it is and what your standing is, Wallahi, you are in need of Allah just like everyone else is in need of Allah and the mercy of Allah. Sometimes your paradise is going to be by serving people whom you don't like, perhaps. Have you not thought that every one of us is different in our temperament? Some people are very angry people. They say, watch out, when you talk to this guy, he has short fuse. You heard that? Short fuse. He will explode. Small thing. He will start shouting. Some people are kind-hearted, but they are bad-mouthed. They scream at you. You know some of those, right? They scream. But the heart is nice and clean. And others, they are quiet and shoot and sharp and they come and they snap at you at the right time. Allah, people are different. Allah wants you to know the people. Mix with them. Understand them. Learn. Benefit them. Help them. Reach out to them and that's how you will live on earth. Allah made us different for us to be able to earn closeness to Allah by getting to know each other, interacting with each other and still fulfilling each other's rights no matter how different the other person is. I will honor you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us honor. Musa alayhi salam came out of his home one day and fast forwarding a little bit and he saw two people fighting. This man was solid, strong, ready to grow up, good food, good everything, mashallah. He was a solid person, good looking, everything. And Musa Aysal was big and dark. He was big and dark in complexion. If you read the, the what the Dhir Rahimahullah says, from some of the narrations, they say he was big, he had a big beard, and he was dark in complexion. Solid guy. And so the one guy says, oh Musa, help me, this guy is wrong me. So Musa Aysal went there and just punched that guy and died with one punch. Simple verse in the Quran. Allah says, Musa alayhi salam punched him one and then kind of Please, my youth, go to the gym here. Don't punch people. <laughs> you look big and so on. So, what's your name? Just act Moses. No, no, no. Relax. 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 We don't go around punching people. The story is mentioned only for us to learn a lesson because the next day, the same person, in fact, when that man died, Musa alayhi salam regretted it so much. In fact, it was one of the things that bothered him right to the end. Bothered him. Oh Allah, forgive me. What I did was wrong. Rabbi inni wa'amtu nafsi fa'ufirni. Oh Allah, I did wrong to my own self. Forgive me. Allah says, Ghafar Allah. Allah forgave me. The next day, the same man fighting someone else. When the same man fighting someone else, he said, Musa, come help me. Musa alayhi salam just stepped forward to go and look at that man. That's why are you fighting with everyone, isn't it? Every day you are fighting with someone. That guy got so scared because he knows what he saw the previous day. And so he exposed Musa alayhi salam. But that was part of the plan of Allah. Right? 
He exposed him. He said, hey, you want to kill me the same way you killed the guy yesterday? So everyone knew, okay, we don't know who killed who yesterday. Now they were after him. He had to leave. He went. Where did he go? He decided, now look, I want to tell you what enlightenment I get from. Sometimes in life, big drastic changes have to be made. Don't worry, Allah knows it's the beginning of a new chapter of your life that is going to be filled with greater successes than ever before. If you have to move, you have to move. How many of you here might have come from some far off land, you or your father or grandfather, and today you are much more successful than you were back in the day? Agree? Look, ask yourself, who is my grandfather? And what was his condition? Wallahi, you will thank Allah today that my condition is better than my grandfather's. Or my great-grandfather, whoever it was. Thank Allah. So sometimes a chapter begins in a new town, a new city, a new country. It's okay. I learned this. Allah Almighty says, Musa salam went to Madian. When he went to Madian, he made the dua to Allah, which I want you to learn. And I want you to ask Allah. He says, Oh Allah, whatever you are going to send down to me in goodness, I am in desperate need of all the goodness that you, you can, any goodness that you send down. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer Oh Allah, I am in desperate need of any goodness that you are going to send in my direction. You know what? Allah sent all the goodness in His direction. He saw these two women that I spoke about a little bit earlier trying to preach the thirst of their flock but they were holding back. Why were they holding back? Because of the values and morals that they had that were so high that did not allow them to go and become vocal and make a big noise and go and make whatever. They were just holding back. They said, let's wait for these people to go. We will go calm. We will go easy. They will not be abused in any way, shape or form. Allah says this in the Quran that when they, when he saw them at the back, he says, why are you right at the back? Come, come forward. Why are you at the back? They explain. Firstly, we are here because our father is an old man. Why did they say that? Because by right, the person responsible of the home is usually the man. Islam teaches you that the man, the husband, the father, is responsible for the home. He's the one who's supposed to protect everyone, provide for them, be responsible for them. If that's what the role you are supposed to fulfill. So they quickly explained why they were there by saying, Father's an old man, we're here. I mean, we, we, we have to do it anyway. And we're waiting for all these people to go, let me go. He says, okay, let me do it for you, come. And he went and he was a strong man, he helped. They came back home very quickly and early. The father inquired why that happened. They explained, we met a strange man and this is what happened. And oh, our father, it's a good idea to employ him from tomorrow. He can do it, we'll pay him. Wow. Why? Because he has two qualities in him. What were those qualities? In The girls are saying to their father, the best person you can employ is one who is hardworking and honest. Two qualities. He's strong, a weak, hardworking. And I mean, he's honest, trustworthy. He's not going to steal our sheep. So the father called the, the man, the father told these girls, go bring him. They brought him. When they brought him, Allah says, He asks, He inquired. So the whole story was delivered to this man. According to the correct narrations, this man was Shuaib, alayhi salam. Shuaib. He was also a prophet of Allah. Imagine two prophets existing at the same time. Amazing. So Allah Almighty says Shuaib offered his daughter in marriage to this man. Think for a moment, was that not an outsider coming from somewhere? Did they not, did they hardly know him? They hardly knew him. But because they knew he was honest and trustworthy, he was ready to give his daughter. Allah Akbar. How many of us, you know the guy is honest, hardworking, good Muslim, but because his complexion is a little bit darker than yours, no? Sorry, not except what? Don't ask me. We know you are a racist. That's what it is. May Allah forgive us. Say it as it is. May Allah forgive us. Strengthen us. If you don't learn that from Iman and Islam and the stories, you have learned nothing. Look at the story. Musa alayhi salam. What did I tell you? He was a big man. What did I say about his complexion? He was dark. 
Right? Here is the father of these girls. In no time, in the first discussion and conversation, he says, you know what? I'm prepared to give you one of my daughters. You want to be married? Come. You can stay here eight years. You will. Stay ten is also when Allah says, Musa alayhi salam was so happy. He, got, he actually got married. He served his father in law. In our communities, you're serving your father in law. They have a name. They call you something, right? You work for your in-laws. They have a very derogatory term. They say, this guy is like this. So what? If Allah bless the father in law with money and wealth and he wants to employ me by all means, I learn I do a better job than an outsider. There's nothing wrong. The business might flourish as, as a result of me coming in. May Allah Almighty grant us a good understanding. Look at how every point that comes up from the lessons of the story of Musa alayhi salam is rich with enlightenment for us to be able to apply it in our own lives. And so, Allah says when he finished his period of 10 years and he left Madian with his family, as he was going, he noticed some, like what appeared to be a fire for him. And he says, oh, my family, you wait here. I see some sign of life there. There is a bit of a flame there. Let me go and see. Perhaps I might come with some form of log for us to benefit from or some guidance. Some guidance. Allah knew that there was guidance coming. When he got to the fire, the Prophet Moses made peace be upon him. He realized that no, it's not what I thought it was. He heard Allah call to him, Ya Musa, in me. Today you can see a guy, he doesn't 
therefore, even a sister, they might not look outwardly like they are very pious. Who knows? They could be closer to Allah in this entire masjid. Don't judge people. Allah has kept one day. It's called the day of judgment. To judge. That day of judgment for us is every day. We are judging this one, judging that one, judging that one. This guy I know, he looks like him. Okay, he's a hypocrite. Okay, who knows? What do you know? Are you reading the heart of the people? When the Sahabi killed another man, after he said, La ilaha illallah, the Prophet says, Why did you do that? He says, But he was just lying. He says, Did you open his heart to check what was inside? The answer is no. So then, how could you do that? With us, we open everybody's hearts. It's, it's as though you go to sleep at night, you had a dream, the guy's heart is open, or the sister's heart is open, you can check all the stuff. You wake up in the morning, you've made the decision. Those are hypocrites. What happened to you? How could you do this? It's not right. Musa alayhi salam, when he went, Allah told him, I have chosen you. When Allah chooses someone, don't be jealous of them. Otherwise, it's your failure. Allah chose them. It's okay. Ask Allah to choose you too to do good things. Oh Allah, use me. Oh Allah, use me. Firstly, guide me, correct me, help me. Let me put into practice what I've learned. Teach me, guide me, and use me to guide others, to serve others, to spend on others, to empower others so that when I meet you, you will grant me Jannah through your mercy. That's how we should be thinking. So, Musa alayhi salam, Allah says, I chose you for what? Something really, really, really tough. I need you to go to the fair and remind him he's not a God. Tell him to worship the Lord of the world. Musa alayhi salam is listening. He's worried. He's really worried. How do we know he's worried? The verse is saying, Musa alayhi salam knows it's a big responsibility. And Allah Almighty spoke to him quite a bit, quite a bit. Allah asked him a question. What's in your right hand? Allah knew better than him what was in his right hand. But so that he can talk to Allah, so that he understands. That's why Musa is known as Kalimullah, the one whom Allah spoke to. Musa alayhi salam. So he says, oh, this is my stick and I do this and I do. He could also have said it's a stick. Agree? He could have just said it's my stick. He, he said, no, I have opportunity to talk. Let me say, Hiya asaya atawakkamu alayha wa abushu miha ala ghadami wa liya fiha ma'aliku ukhra. Prolonging the discussion, this is my stick. I use it to guide my flock. Bottom line is, 
there should be that at least a sense of care and love for one another. That is known as the Ummah. That is the Ummah. We can discuss differences, we can learn, we can teach. It should be respectful. It should never be in a way that is degrading and belittling someone else. These are your brothers and your sisters. How do I know this? Allah Almighty tells Musa and Harun, Go, both of you, to the Pharaoh. Indeed, he has strayed and he has done wrong and he has oppressed and he has harmed and so on. Different verses mention different qualities. Go to him, but Allah says, Go to him, both of you, and both of you speak in soft words. Use a soft approach with him. Listen. This is the word of the Quran. Saying words that are soft. Why? Maybe perhaps he might take heed and he might, that reminder might benefit him. He might change. He might fear Allah. Tell me, did Allah not know that he was not going to come? Did Allah not know that this man is not going to accept, he's going to reject? Wallahi, Allah knew it already before he even spoke to Moses. May peace be upon him. That the Pharaoh never going to accept it. So what was the point of telling Moses to go? Because Allah wanted the Hujja. Allah wanted the Pharaoh to be given a chance to be guided. The chance. That was his chance. Same way Allah gives all of us chances to turn. You are involved in something. You know you need to do something for the sake of Allah. You know you need to leave something for the sake of Allah. Leave it. Allah gives you a few chances. After that, He doesn't anymore. But we're alive. We're breathing. We're hearing. It's a reminder. So it's a good thing. The Pharaoh. Allah says to Musa and Harun, go and tell him soft words. The man who used to say, I'm the Lord of the worlds. Allah says, go and speak to him softly. Perhaps he can hear. Perhaps he might take him. I tell you, those of us who are calling others towards Allah, and it should be all of us, but when you want to talk to someone and guide them or give them a good word or you see them astray, you need to remember, none of those whom you will ever meet can be worse than Fir'aun. None of them. Who, who do you talk to? Who do you think needs a lot of attention? They are not worse than Fir'aun. What the Pharaoh did was worse than them. And nobody who is going to talk to those people in today's time can claim that he is better than Moses. So someone who is not as grand as Moses Your neighbor's child is astray. A member of the community is astray. Someone is addicted to drugs, alcohol, gambling, adultery, pornography, whatever it may be. A woman might be struggling in her dress code. A man might be struggling with his dress code. Today we're going to talk about that because men sometimes nowadays, you and I know that there are challenges regarding the way we dress. And God protect us and our children. The levels of morality and the values are really becoming different. Now if you want them to come and you're going to be harsh, kafir, fasid, fajir, munafik, are they going to come? Before the man opens his mouth, you already call him a kafir. From where? Where did you come, my brother? The other day I was saying, guy accepted his Islam, he declared shahada in one place, another country. He says, before I left the masjid, people already came to me, be careful, those guys, they are straight. He says, oh, what do you mean? And he just declared his shahad. And the other people came, watch out, this must be here, the guys are like this, like this, like this. He says, oh. He says, by the time I exited the masjid, four or five people came to me to be careful of this, be careful of that. I said, in this way, I've got to be careful of all the Muslims. But I just accepted this one. Go easy on the man. Develop a good relation with someone. You want to give them. First, get acquainted with them. And then you'll be able to talk to them, they will listen to you. But you have no relation because you don't serve community. You are not participating in community affairs. You don't care when people are dying of hunger.
hunger. You are not bothered when there's a flood. You are not bothered when people are in need. You don't even care. And then you want to come and pretend like you are the man who is the champion of the deed of Allah. When your mouth is worse than that of Musa alayhi salam. And the person you are talking to is not even as bad as the fair. How? What type of echo would you write from that mouth? There will be no echo. People will know you, watch out this guy. He swears, he's extreme, and he's too harsh and hard. It's true, it's happening in our society. Imagine I'm standing in front of you. Wallah, in everything that I say, I, I ask Allah to make it for His sake. I will call you towards Allah and His Rasul. I will call the Quran and the Hadith. I will try my best to give you a message. I firmly believe that we need in society, I need to see the children come by the will of Allah. Allah will make them, not me. But do I not need to try? I see the young faces. I'm happy. I'm excited. I try not to disrespect those who disrespect me. Guess what? They call me a kafir. What do you expect? What do you expect? It's okay. It's okay. The damage sometimes that we do, we don't realize it. One day they may come and seek forgiveness, and many have come and asked for forgiveness. Many have come, they say, You have to please, you have to forgive me. I said bad thing, it's okay. Moses, did we not raise you when you were a little baby? You did you were you in my house? And then he says, did you not go and kill someone? Wasn't it you? Musa salam says, Regarding the fact that I was raised in your house, Because some of the weaker followers of Musa 
They were saying, Inna na mudarakunde, they're catching up with us, we are in trouble, we are dead now. Musa alayhi salam, his conviction, he says, Kalla, never, ever, don't ever think we are going to be destroyed. Kalla, it's impossible. Inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdi, with me is my Lord, he will guide me up to the next. And true, Allah says to Musa alayhi salam, Ibrib bi'asaka Allah. Take a seat and just touch it on the water here of the sea. And guess what? It started parting. One side went this way, one side went that way, and people are looking. And the story is in the Old Testament, it's in the Quran, and it is a common story between three different faiths. And so he's looking, and his people are looking, and they're excited, and they're happy, and the water comes on the sides, creating a huge glass-like effect on either side, and they came down, and they are on the bed of the sea, and they are going to the other side, and the Pharaoh comes, and he thought he's going to catch them, because they've got into the sea, and there's nowhere to go, but he doesn't realize, you are not the Lord of the world. Allah is showing you that actually the Lord of the world can do something that you will never ever be able to even do a droplet of. So he comes and because he wanted to be big with his people and cronies, he says, it's open for me. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It opened for him as well. But for Moses, it opened as a means of saving him. And for the Pharaoh, the same thing opened as a means of destroying him. And this is why sometimes certain things happen. It's good for one, not good for another. Remember this. Moses, they went in praising Allah, declaring Allah, and so on and so on. And they went in humble, humility. And they came and they were getting to the other side. The Pharaoh came and he went in. And they went in with their army. And as they in the center, they noticed, oh, this thing is closing in. This thing is closing in. Now who's closing? You're right, it's open for you, but to destroy you. Now when you came in, against all odds, you were not drowned. And Allah drowned him in stages. What was the stage? Initially he's seeing everything coming. He's still arrogant. He's still arrogant. When he saw the angel of death come to him to take his soul away from his body, that is the time he realized, hey, I can't be saved here today. So what do I do? He says, I believe in what? If he says, I believe in the Lord of the Worlds, there's a problem. He used to call himself the Lord of the Worlds. So what did he say? Allah says, He said, I believe. Look at the statement. He says, I believe there is none worthy of worship besides the Lord of Banu Israel. Allahu Akbar. I believe that the God that Banu Israel worship, He is the Lord of the world and He's the only one worthy of worship. La ilaha illa alladhi amalat bihi Banu Israel. And then he says, I am a submitter. Allah says two things. When you see the angel of death, everything is shut. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah says, I accept the tawbah and the repentance and the seeking of forgiveness of anyone for as long as they are not upon ghara. What is the ghara? When your soul begins to come out of your body and there is a sound that your throat when it's now out almost, it's too late. Too late. You and I are alive. May Allah forgive you. May Allah forgive you and all of us. And may Allah grant us positive change that will be a means of pleasing Him and earning His mercy. Amen. So, then there was another state. What happened? He died. When did he die? In the water. Now there was a problem because Banu Israel, they were oppressed for a long, long time. Long time. How long? There was a time when the Prophet Moses made a dua to Allah, Oh Allah, this Fir'aun, you gave him wealth, he's using it to harm. You gave him power, he's using it to kill and commit oppression. Oh Allah, you gave him all these things. We are struggling. 
suffering and suffering, O oh Allah, destroy him and his wealth and destroy everything, O oh Allah. Save us from this man, it's enough. Now for a prophet of Allah, to ask for destruction is only a last resort. Last resort, why? His duty is to give the guidance. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called the people towards the deen, he never ever cursed them in the initial stages, no. He worked and worked and worked and the more they oppressed, the more he prayed for them. And guess what? Nearly all of them came. Nearly all of them came. But it took them years and years and years. Noah, may peace be upon him. Noah, he called his people for so long. Right at the end, he made a dua, Allah destroyed them. So, you know what? I called them. Oh Allah, I called them. And Allah destroyed them. The same applies amongst us. We hurt someone. We hurt them again. And the third time. And the fourth time. And a thousand times. And one thousand. If that guy is a friend of Allah, you are in soup, I'm telling you. You are in soup. Because some people don't ask Allah to destroy others. The hadith says, Ittaki da'wad al-mutlum fa'inna hulaysa bainaha wa bain Allah hijab. Be very fearful of the dua, the supplication made against you by the one whom you have wronged. Watch out, because there is no barrier between that and Allah. No barrier. You wrong someone, be careful. If they have to say, oh Allah, fix this man, you will be fixed. Be careful. That's why don't harm people. Musa is right at the end, he says, oh Allah, destroy this man. Allah says to Musa and Harun, First thing you want to hear the dua, it's in the Quran, it's interesting, let's listen to it. He says, Rabbana innaka atayta fir'awna wa mala'ahu zinatan wa amwalan fil hayati dunya Rabbana li kullu an sabili So in that way, he was explaining that, Oh Allah, you have given him beauty and power and whatever else you gave him in the world. He's using it to be astray from your path. Rabbana Mubisala Amwalihim O Allah, extinguish their wrath. Extinguish their wrath. Washtuna ala kulubihim And O Allah, tighten up their hearts. Fala yukminu, they are not going to believe. Hatta yawmul adab al-alim Until they see the severe punishment. And do exactly that dua. When he saw the punishment, he turned. It was too late. He did turn. It was too late. That's why the Prophet says Abu Jahl was worse than Fir'aun. You know why? When Fir'aun was dying, at least he said there is no God worthy of worship besides the God of Anu Israel. Even though it was too late, he said it. When Abu Jahl was being killed in the battle of Badr, do you know what happened? He says, why he was dying? He said to the guy who was slicing, he says, cut it from lower down so people can see I had a big head. Abu Jahl, the worst. His name was Abu Hisham, not a tyrant. May Allah protect all of us. Imagine when Allah has brought you to your knees, please soften up, soften up. Soften. Sometimes Allah brings us to our knees because He wants us to turn to Him. He wants us to come to Him. Soften up. We should soften up before that. So the Pharaoh says, whatever he said, and then he was drowned. Now that he's drowned, before I get to that, Allah tells Musa and Harun, Ujibat da'watukuma, when the dua was made, Allah says, we have answered your dua. Fastakima, so we want you to be steadfast. Your dua, we already answered it. When we will give you is up to us. It's reported that the, the, the punishment came 40 years later. According to one of the narrations, the punishment came 40 years later. If you don't want to say 40, for example, it came a long time later. In the interim, Allah told Musa and Harun, Istakima, you must be steadfast. Now you made a dua, we accepted your dua, be steadfast. Don't worry about this, we will deal with it. Don't follow the paths of those who don't know. You just do your thing and keep going. That's why the honorable from amongst us, we have a close relation with Allah. It is our duty. We know that Allah is to be worshipped alone. Keep doing your thing. Don't let the detractors detract you. But who is Sahih came and they said, Where's this man? Well, he's drowned. We don't believe he's drowned. Why don't they believe he's drowned? He was such a big tyrant. Do you really think he's 
drunk. He's drunk. He was so powerful. Allah knows no matter how powerful one fly, one mosquito finish you up. Right? If a mosquito, may Allah protect us from malaria and dengue flu. Mosquito has to bite you and then one one. And there's malaria in there. Can it not be fatal if it's not treated? And if Allah wants, how many do we know? Why do people pass away? That's why right. it became cerebral and it, it got a little bit too far. How did it start? Small mosquito, that's it. Flag, can it not cause cholera and whatever else? Okay. That's Allah. The army of Allah is actually absolutely everything in existence. He can use it against you and I at any moment. And Allah says that. So Allah says, you know what? Even the ocean, Allah instructed you to spit that body out. Spit it out. So that people can see forever that there is this man, this is who he claimed he was, this is how many he killed, but we are preserving that body so that it can be a lesson for all those who come after that. Listen to the verse of the Quran. Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً On this day, we are going to preserve this body of yours for it to remain as a lesson for all those who come after. Today, when you go to Egypt, where they were, you go to Egypt, where they were, they will show you the mummies. They say, these are preserved. Preserved by Allah, actually. Which one exactly is that particular pharaoh? There is difference of opinion. The most common view is that the one known as Ramses II, perhaps he was the one. And when you see the guy, he was ugly, man. He was so ugly and helpless. If you've seen, you can Google it nowadays, Ramses II, pharaoh. He showed you this way. I'm thinking to myself, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. He called himself God, the Lord. Look at how helpless he is. If you were probably to flake off that skin, it's, it's just preserved. And it's Allah's decision that it's preserved. It's thousands of years, right? We don't know the exact date per se. That's the Quran. Who got the victory? Tell me. Moses or the Pharaoh? Moses. How many years did they harm them for? Long, long time. What did they do? They killed. They destroyed. They harmed. They threatened. They did things. People were helpless. There is so much to the story that I haven't even mentioned. So many aspects of the Quran is full of it. And so on. So many places in the Quran. Allah speaks about it. Allah wants you to know. Oh, my worshippers. These are stories we mention to you for them to remain as echoes of enlightenment so you don't lose hope in my mercy. You will have tyrants on earth, but for every pharaoh there is Moses. And every pharaoh will have his day when he will be destroyed to smithereens against his own will. Because it's the will of Allah. So my brothers and sisters, I hope that the few words I uttered will give you some hope. Hope regarding what's going on in the world against the Muslims today, in some places. Secondly, encourage you to remain steadfast. Allah says, Istaqim, remain steadfast. We need you, we need each other, we need to stand together. When an enemy wants to attack, he's not going to say, sorry, which masjid do you go to? Do they do that? No, they'll attack everyone who they want to. You're a Muslim, Muslim. We are one Ummah. That's what you need to remember. I am not downplaying the differences, but I am only telling you how to navigate through the differences regarding the relationship between you. It should not be one of belittlement. It should not be one of vulgarity and abuse. It should be that, look, yes, there's a difference. We acknowledge it and we know, but we respect each other. These differences were there from the very beginning, were they not? Meaning from many, many hundreds of years. We will discuss them, we will talk about them, we will present evidences and we will ensure that we can exchange with each other in a respectful way. But bottom line is we said the shahada, so we are part of the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and steadfastness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please remain seated. Alhamdulillah we have our 
governors of Garissa County, Brother Governor Aradhanti Jama, who would like to give a word of thanks. We request you please remain seated after the word of thanks to allow our guests, respected guests, to please uh, exit and then we will announce how the exit plan is for the rest of you. Please do not leave from your places. Volunteers are requested to keep you sitting until we have finished the word of thanks. Thank you.
it is. So as you can see now, we have just uh, finished the being given the speech, and Alhamdulillah, indeed, what to wengi. Indeed, what to wengi. But yeah, mashallah. Now, nah, mashallah. Yeah. And we really appreciate, we really appreciate for that. Indeed, I will have uh, some small, yeah, sure. Yes, yes. Everyone here is responsible to ensure that we leave the place. The mud is clean. And please, let's leave in an orderly manner. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. I want to do some uh, interviews, eh? Some two, three interviews. Bro, salam You don't want an interview, bro? Oh, people are fearing interviews here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, bro. A small interview about the speech and everything, please. Okay, okay. Just make the call and we'll do it. Brothers from Paras, Cash. Paras Cash Healing, they are offering you service to drop you home. For those who don't have transport, there's a van outside. As Paras Cash Healing, written on it. You want to be seen here? Why not? Be seen here. Great people. They might charge you a little bit, they might not. Depends so as you can case. see guys, what we wanna talk and uh, we really are amazing in the and uh, we appreciate because uh, it has been good. Those uh, three days, eh, Wallahi, I swear they have been uh, very good uh, days to us. Alaykum bro, VP. Zima Bana. VP, how was the speech and everything bro? Uh, boring, powerful, uh -huh. uh, enlightened, enlightened now. Yeah, true, indeed. Okay, shukran sana bro, inshallah. We are just trying to make sure that you get it, eh? all of it. So, we have to make sure that you get out of it, all of it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, inshallah. And, uh, please make sure you stay safe. Please make sure you stay safe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, make sure like uh, you like the video. Please share it world widely. So that uh, it reaches as many people as possible. Please. Let's get them to 5,000 to 1 million, please. Eh? Our aim is the, this playlist to get to 1 million. That's our aim. That's our aim. Salaam alaikum zong. Aliyak. Uko salam ha. Nilikuwa ningependa kukuuliza pengine umesikia vipi speech ya Mufti Mengo? Hii ni YouTube. Tuko live tu ni social media. Oh. Eh, ume vipi hiyo ilikuwaje nini yako pengine umesikiaje hiyo 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 speech na pengine ungeambia vijana nini na wale ambao kwamba wanakuangalia? Okay, um, I would like to take this opportunity. Yes. To thank you first and foremost yes. for giving me the, this opportunity. Thank you. And um, uh, the speech was excellent. Thank you. It was marvelous. She, she, he talks about um, the Prophet Musa. Yes. From where he started to, to dealing with their own and all sort of things. Yeah. And uh, it was so encouraging to you. Yes. To encourage the youth to follow his footpath. He is a good scholar. Yes. And, um, Having posted him in Kenya is a big uh, advantage to us. Yes. Let us follow his footsteps and be like him. So, shukran sana. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name? Yes. Oh, mashallah. That's really amazing. So, like, uh, tell me, yeah. 
Uh, I want you to tell me, like, uh, what did you get, like, uh, from Mufti Meng? What's important? Like, how was the speech and uh, how did you feel the speech and everything? So, let me first reduce the light a bit so that we don't get burned a lot. Yeah, so tell me, bro, how was the speech? I'll take time. Yeah, true. So you have to make sure you make dua, but it will take time. You have not come with the cards, so they can utilize the facility. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate, bro. So guys, we are done and we want uh, to end exactly. the lives, inshallah. Thank you very much for all the Make sure the like uh, you subscribe Thank to the YouTube channels much. and uh, make sure you really and you help us get to 1 million, 2 million views, inshallah. And as many subscribers as uh, you can. Because we really are looking forward uh, to making sure that uh, everything will be best, inshallah. Everything will be best. And we were live, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's really going to be amazing. Yeah, so, brother, I'm going to be able to install program in Ramadan. Thank you again. Thank you again. So, guys, at least we have now the time to take lunch. Bro, come. You want to give me a picture? Alaykum salam, what's your name? Ridwan. Do you know what's Ridwan in Islam? Do you know what's Ridwan in Islam? What's it? Oh, mashallah, mashallah, that's really amazing. And uh, come, come, bro, don't fear, man. Don't fear the camera. So, let me just ask you, let's stand this way. Okay, what are the to make sure I'm coming in? Ah, wait, wait, wait. wait. So guys, watch a tuone if we will uh, get to see him. Let's just see if Tutamuona, inshallah. Let's see, let's see. If Tutamuona, inshallah. Akitoka, watch a tumsubiria tuone ka at least taona gari yake. Akitoka, inshallah. And remember that uh, many people are waiting for him. And uh, it's really amazing. So, make sure as uh, you wait for him. Avande, you want to watch Nyumbani? Hamu TV. Yeah, Hamu. Apana huko ni Hamu. This is my name. Hamu, Hamu ni kina yake Sasumeni to akule ni kufanya watu interview ala fikisha Tama wazo ni kufanya watu interview katha Lama waleku You are in the... They will not know who is it Please, if you don't mind Don't fear the camera Never fear the camera in a week Salamu alaikum so what's your experience with the lectures that maybe you have had since Mufti Men came in Kenya? Yes. Inspiring and you can learn a lot about his 
vlog. Yes. Him. True. And Role model? Yeah, true. Yeah, he he seems as such a nice person. True. Inshallah, he has a nice personality. Yeah, true. And inshallah, I hope like, and uh, we all are going to follow the path of uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, inshallah, that's all. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, eh? Yeah, inshallah. So uh, these are some people that uh, I'm meeting some youth and I want really to do some uh, interviews with them so that at least we get uh, the feedback and inshallah let's hope that it will all go well as you can see here the place now is getting empty but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy for us and uh, for you inshallah bro tomorrow in school eh? so Inshallah. Huh? So, let's